Hello, it's a few days since I started recording this. I don't know what the date is. Alexa, what's the date? What's the date, Alexa? Alexa, what's the date? Answer me, bitch. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of April. Right, it's Wednesday. I'm horrible to Alexa. Mark gets all upset. Well, he doesn't get upset, but he doesn't think I should talk to Alexa in that manner. But Alexa's just a disembodied AI piece of shite who is going to take over the world. I ask Alexa if she's evil and she says she's not. But I'm not convinced. Crikey, this camera's heavy, holding it up at arm's length. Right, so, what's planned for today? More excitement. The first exciting thing is I've put on a load of washing, although I haven't started it properly yet. It's rather filthy and smelly. It's uh, tea towels and the microfiber pads for my floor washer and they were muddy. So I'm doing a sort of a pre-wash. And instead of doing a pre-wash with the main, what I do sometimes is just do a 20 minute quick wash. So it's a quick wash, rinse and spin as a pre-wash. And then I'll select the main hot wash for those items. Let me just take a swig of my coffee. Ooh, looks a bit, looks a bit rank. Needs topping up, I think. Um, uh, Mark's put on a loaf of bread. He said, don't touch the bread maker. Four hours, 15 minutes. He's eaten, I mean, he only made one. I made one yesterday, was it the day before? There's any of that left. It was out of a packet. It was a sourdough mix for bread maker. Very nice. So today we might be getting Lottie and Willow just for the day. Um, I'm not sure. So um, yeah, just a little day trip for Lottie and Willow. Oh, let me see, is it time? I think it's time. It's time for my yogurt. Uh, oh, it's heavy. This, I'm trying to do this single-handedly. It's not easy. Oh, that'll need drying. Hang on. So this is a yogurt I've made in my Easy Yo Yogurt Maker. Um, I put it on last night. I normally do it if I remember. I haven't had one for a while, so I thought, oh, it's time I did another yogurt. So um, as long as I remember to do it, you know, last thing at night before I go to bed, it's ready, still quite warm. It's ready in the morning. Now it just needs to go in the uh, in the fridge. That is, I've never had it before, but it's a ginger flavour yogurt. Ginger, indeed. Um, oh, heck. right. Does it? No, it doesn't fit there. Oh, I've no space there either. I've because I've got all these bottles of water. Will it fit? It'll have to fit on that shelf. Hang on. Put it on Mark's shelf for now with all his gusto rubbish. That's gusto. He forgot to cancel his gusto. So it arrived. Right, so that's uh, going to chill. And I'm going to make later on, folks, I'm going to make myself a ginger cake. One of those mixes again in a loaf size. So for my pudding, when I do have my one meal a day, for my pudding, I'm going to have a nice slice of ginger cake with some ginger yogurt and probably some pears on it. That'll be nice, won't it? Pears or peaches. Let me just take a swig. So, what else is planned? Oh, I'm getting a Morrison's delivery. That'll be fun. From Amazon. Yes, I've got a Morrison's delivery coming, I think, between 11 and 12. I can't remember. Uh, it was a sort of accidental order, sort of. What happened was, oh, the washing machine is going to start making a noise now. Uh, what happened was, I ordered a couple of bits from Amazon and um, I, they always say, "Get, do you want Prime? Do you want Prime? I say, no, I don't want Prime, thank you. I've had it from time to time, normally when it's a free one month you know, trial or whatever. I say, no, I don't want it. They were offering me Prime for four forty nine instead of eight ninety nine a month or something for three months. So I said, no, no, no. But when I came to complete the order, it said, welcome to Prime. I thought, oh, you, you devious so-and-sos, I thought. I didn't click on it. 
So I thought, oh, I'll just leave it for the month. I've paid 4 49 But if you have Amazon Prime, you are allowed to order from Morrison's. And it's different from ordering... I've done a video on this or two. But it's different from ordering from Morrison's on Morrison's website because it's not delivered in a van. It's delivered in somebody's car. It could be an Uber. But while I've still got the Amazon Prime for a month, I'll probably do another Morrison's order for fresh stuff. Or I could get up off my lazy ass and walk up to Asda, couldn't I? But, you know, too much to do. Oh, hang on, that's the phone. Oh, sorry about that. That was Mark on the landline telephone telling me that the dogs are coming. It was up in the air. He said, he called up to me. I was still in my bed when he went to work. He called up to me, told me that he had a bread in the bread maker and um, said that we might be having the dogs. He'll confirm later. So he has confirmed that in about half an hour, Lottie and Willow will be coming for the day. So we'll be showing you little Lottie and Willow pillow. So, um, oh, there's no coaster. I'll just put it over here. Now I forgot, I forgot what to say now. Oh yes, so yes. Oh yes, get in. Get in, Jones. Mm. Mm. He was he was seeing Catherine Jenkins, the opera singer, but the word on the street is that she's she's he too. And that he was her beard or she was his beard. I don't know how it works. If you don't know what a beard is, a beard is um a description for it can be a man or a lady who is married to a um in order to you know, uh, um, assuage any um, any doubts, you know, like, so if Liberace got married, you know, or um, who else? Barry Manilow. I always knew about Barry Manilow. Oh, yes. I knew he was a Nancy boy. Barry Manilow, Liberace. Um, Michael Barrymore, I knew he was way before he decided to come out of the closet and I also had my doubts about Philip Schofield. I always thought Philip, and you'll see, uh, I've, I've mentioned Philip quite a bit in my, in my archives that you're starting to see, my As Seen On TV series that goes on for months and months and months. I'm already up to July and I've, I've just scratched the surface. So I'm gonna take a break from editing and uploading those. Well, I don't have to upload because there's so many you know, in the bank, so to speak, ready for you to see if you want to watch them. So, um, but yes, Philip Schofield, no surprise to me. I always thought he was gay. I was more surprised when I found out he had a wife and kids. I thought, what? So, anyway, I think Mark fancies Gethen. So, I think he's, I think he's having a secret affair with Gethen Jones. Mm. We're going to Wales with a caravan this year. I don't know where, somewhere. Um, we're also, of course, going to uh, Northumbria with Mother and her dogs and my eldest brother in June. We're going to Whitby in the caravan. Um, oh, I think we're having a short break in the Yorkshire Dales in the caravan soon. I'm off to London on my own. Yeah, twice actually. This is an extra thing. In May, it's all booked. I've booked the uh, train train tickets, I've booked the hotel, I've got the concert. I'm off to Abba Voyage again, yeah, again. So it's gonna be three times. I've already seen Abba Voyage with Mark. I'll do, I'm gonna do a separate video of my initial Abba Voyage. So anyway, I because I, I, I'm in Abba's, oh, it's bloody washer. A 1600 pound washing machine and it's making a, a, a funny noise. I'm not, never buying Milo again, they can F off. They're moving to China before too long anyway, in Poland. Poland for the washing machines, China for the vacuums. You mark my words. Yeah, mark them. Take heed. Might as well just buy some cheap rubbish and just bin it after a couple of years. I might get another AEG actually. I didn't mind AEG, they're Polish, but at least they're not uh, as pretentious as Mila. Right, yeah, so. I'm in the ABBA Voyage and ABBA sort of mailing list and I got an email a couple of weeks ago saying it's the second anniversary of Voyage. Hang on a minute, can I pause this thing? Oh, it's okay, it stopped spinning. I think it stopped its um, 
little 20 minute wash. Oh, there we go. I've just got to turn the bleep off. Hang on folks. Stop. Right, there we are. Um, I'm back. And now the bed maker started going woo, woo, woo. So what the bread maker does is you put all the crap in, I mean the ingredients, and then you press the button, and then it sort of doesn't do anything. It starts warming up a bit. Just, you know, body temperature sort of warmth. And then um, after a while, it starts to go, mmm, 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 mmm. That's a little paddle. And then before too long, it starts going, mmm, 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 and do that for a long time. And then I think it has to rest a bit and then it does the kneading again and then it rests and then it starts to bake. I've had that bread maker a while. We've had them, we've had bread makers for some years, starting with cheap Morris Richards ones and we got the Panasonic, um, which Mark decided he wanted to use again after finding out what crap they put in bread. So we make, tend to make our own bread. Today actually from Amazon, I'm getting one of these None of them have very good reviews, but it's not too expensive. I can never slice bread maker bread properly. You know, sometimes I get it right, but often I get two millimeters thick at the top and about two centimeters at the bottom. I don't know how to slice bread. Now that noise now, it's adding the yeast because that machine's got a separate yeast dispenser. So it adds the yeast at a later stage. So it's sort of, it has a little contain, a little hopper thing, and that's what that's doing. And it's probably going to mix it a bit more. Right, oh, I keep going off on a tangent, don't I? What was I talking about? Bread, get in, Abba, Abba, Abba. So, right, yeah, get back to Abba, Rog. So, because I'm in the mailing doodah, I got an email saying it's two years in May since Abba Voyage premiered in London, in Stratford, in London. And as a special event, there's going to be a concert, but at the start of the concert, there's going to be a Q&A with Benny and Bjorn from ABBA. Yes, not the avatars, not the digital versions of ABBA, but the real old versions of ABBA, the real, you know, human flesh versions. So I thought, oh, well, I'm going back in October. And then I told Mark about it and thought, oh, mm. and he said, oh, go on, just book it. He just wants rid of me for a couple of days. So I have. So I've got the first class travel um, down to King London, London King's Cross. I've got a room booked uh, where we stayed before because I'm, it's walking distance within the Abbot Arena. So I'm going down a little bit apprehensive, but not, hmm. You know, I know some of you thinking, oh, what's he, why is he apprehensive just going to London? Yeah, well, I am a bit apprehensive about going to London on my own. I'm never apprehensive. Well, I'm, I think I was a little bit apprehensive going to London with Mark, but when I'm on my own, it's, oh. But the thing is, I'm staying in the same hotel I stayed at, so I know what that's like. I know what to do at breakfast time. I know where to walk to get to the arena. I know that there'll be plenty of people in that hotel going to see ABBA because there was the last time. The, the number of people I saw with the ABBA carrier bags after um, the first concert and having a, a drink at the bar in, in the hotel. So a lot of people were there to see ABBA. So yes, as long as I, I write down um, the exact tube uh, trains I need to get to get to Stratford, that's fine, that's the only thing. You know, I'm fine getting to King's Cross and then I'll just have to remember, because I don't want to be in London Underground looking at the maps on the wall thinking, right, what do I have to get? It'll all be pre-planned on my phone. I'll have it in big print. I'll, I'll see, right, I need to get so-and-so line to this station. I think it involved a couple of, of um, stop, you know, it wasn't one um, tube. I had to sort of get on one tube and then it was to another station and it was like an overground train to Stratford. So once I get to Stratford, there's the Westfield, it's right next to the Westfield shopping centre in Stratford. So I can go there and get a sandwich and stuff from M&S. Um, and then I know where to walk to the hotel. So I've done it all before. So 
with me, I, do, I am apprehensive about new, new experiences. But once I've done them, then I'm fine. And the more I do something, the more easy it becomes. So by the time I go back in October, it'll be like, oh yeah, well it's slightly different in October because I'm not stopping in London. I'm going to East Grinstead in October and I'll be stopping at Travelodge, which I, I haven't booked any of that yet. I do have the tickets for the ABBA concert, but I haven't booked my Travelodge yet and I haven't got the train tickets yet. So that's, that's going to be later on. There's some dodgy person walking around outside. I don't know who it is. Be off with you. Right, well, the dogs are coming shortly, so um, I better make sure everything's prepared for them. And um, we'll have a, we'll, we'll say hello to Lottie and Willow in a minute. Well, Lottie and Willow have arrived. No fanfare. These two slept through it. Look at the mud. It just, uh, it's just a, an absolute mud fest here at the moment. Even with this, another bit of carpet, another mat, it still gets into the living room. Can't mow the lawn because it's like a bog. Hello, Lottie and his willow. She having a plopsy, I think. Daisy, it's your sister. Oh, hello, sister. <laughs> they just settle in as soon as they arrive. I mean, they've been here enough times. They're only here for the day, so they'll just be getting one meal. And they can go in their little uh, carry thing if they want to have a nap. Hey, Hello. Hello, Lottie. Lottie. Hello, Winkles. Little willow pillow. Hey. You're going in there. Let me open it for you so you can get in and out. Oh, don't you do your crying. You just here for a day. Yes, I know. Whoops, Daisy, watch the Oh. Need to put um a plant pot there or something if I leave the door open because uh the wind blows it. Oh not Molly's not out there eating poo, is she? Oh heck, I'll have to put me I'll put me muddy crocs on. Actually it's bin day, so I need to I was doing that before the dogs arrived, so I need to put the bin and recycling out. What are you doing? Yoi. Hey you Yes it's all mud, it's all We've, we think we've got another. They've been doing work on the uh, ground near the house at the side because houses have been sort of flooding. Not, not completely, but there was some broken aqueduct or something. They've been here months. They've stopped. But now we've got a problem at the front of the house. We've got, an, uh, we've got a little stream that never used to be there. I think someone's coming to have a look. But because we've had so much rain, it's just a boggy mess. I mean, I've given up. I mean, well, I, this carpet's been shampooed that many times, but I'm thinking, you know, there's only, only so many times you can shampoo a carpet before it starts to separate from the backing. That's happened in our old house near the door, uh, near the kitchen door, where it got the most heavy, heavy traffic. So it had to be uh, shampooed a lot. But eventually the... Um, the backing breaks down, the, the adhesive breaks down in the backing and it separates and then you get sort of a wavy effect. Um, it started happening in Mark's bedroom. So um, I'll just have to wait until May. I think it's May. Is it May? I'm not sure. Yes, it's middle of May when they're coming to do the garden and we'll get a new lawn that's going to be raised, drainage underneath it all new patio etc oh stop your whining that look at that mud there i do keep it clean folks but there comes a stage when you've just wiped it and then the dogs just step on it and it's messy again so oh dear me right so that's the washer now on its main main wash 60 degree whites 
and the bread maker ooh 333 so that's got 3 hours 33 minutes to to make the bread 1 hour 42 to wash the clothes oh it's it's such a hard life pressing all these buttons and then going for a nap oh you know there's a lot wrong with this world isn't there but um the fact that we can make bread at the touch of a button and wash our clothes at a touch of a button it's marvelous really isn't it so some things about technology are good right folks i've greased and lined my loaf tin there and i've got 60 mil now they say oil but uh, this is melted butter in my case 60 ml of mate, melted mated i was going to say mated butter i wonder what that's like melted butter 60 milliliters of melted butter or oil then to that we add the 200 milliliters of water and then the ginger cake mix yes that's right so i've got the oven coming to temp i think it's 150 gas uh, gas mark four if you're using a fan oven it's uh, 140 to 160 degrees so i'm doing it at 150. i think um the last one i made i did it at a slightly lower temperature than before and it was better for it it wasn't quite so uh, crisp on the outside mm, this seems i think this has actually got pieces of ginger in it I do like ginger. I was surprised to find out that my mum doesn't like ginger at all. I do like ginger. I do like it in those shots. I like it in a juice. Um, I just like ginger. I think it's a very good, um, good thing to have, really. Right, there's that. So we can now get the old Bosch Turbo Fix. Oh, I thought it was Turbo Mix. Why is it called Turbo Fix? That makes no sense whatsoever. Right, we'll start off slow. I think well, I think it's a minute or two. Let me check. Oh, I have to spell. Oh, crikey, I didn't empty the thing. It's gone all over the top of the cooker. Um, so basically, blend together smooth batter for one minute using electric or two if you're having a hand job. But I tend to do it for a little bit more than a minute, even with the electric. So we'll start off slow until the dry ingredients is combined. What you could do. If, you, if your mix is going everywhere, get a clean tea towel and sort of partly cover it. It's starting to labour a bit now. So we can go up a speed. Okay, I think that's mixed. Get me spatula. Make sure there's no mix left unmixed. And then we'll pour it in. Blue Peter style, so you can see what I'm doing, sort of. I can't really see. Well, I sort of can see. You find things a lot slower when you're filming them. I'm sure vloggers will agree. If I was to make things like make this cake or do other things in my life, when I'm not filming and talking about them, it's a lot quicker. But some folk like to see these mundane things. And maybe one day I'll like to see them. I am enjoying watching myself from years and years ago because it's like watching somebody else. So maybe a few years from now, if I'm still here, if we're all still here, um, I can watch this video and think, oh yes, that were the days, those were the days, that were the days. Those were the days when we could buy sort of stuff that resembled real food. But of course now we're all eating the powdered bugs and the, the pills and the simulated food. Oh, I miss the days of real food. Yeah, it might be like that. Who knows? Anyway, that thing didn't happen, did it? On the 8th. Oh, wait, is it the 9th today? Yes. Uh, Alexa, what's the date? Today is Wednesday, the 10th of oh. April. 
the 10th, it was the 9th yesterday. So yeah, so all these doom and gloom predictions, earthquakes, volcanoes, internet down because of this solar eclipse in America. And what happened? Well, from what I gather, bugger all. I've, I've had it now. I said to myself, I said, Roger, if the world doesn't end on the 8th or if nothing catastrophic happens, then that's it. You can you just stop watching all this fear porn on the YouTube and just go back into your shell, or not your shell, go back into your little bubble and just do silly things like this. Just make cakes, play with dolls' houses, unbox and fix up vacuums, walk your dogs and just ignore the vile propaganda and the evil that's on in this world because there's nothing I can do to stop it and just live my life how I want to live it there that's lovely so I've just got a few minutes to wait until the oven reaches temp and that will go in for 50 to 60 minutes I don't know if I'll get much in the dishwasher yeah it's pretty full it's going to go on shortly Oh. I'm always having to rearrange things in this machine. I tell you, I think more divorces are caused by dishwasher loading than anything else. I mean, I've already had to fiddle with this because, Mark, these are dog bowls. And um, I do have a friend who thinks it's disgusting that we wash our dog bowls in with our regular bowls, but everything's sanitised in the dishwasher, you know, so... It's fine. I've, I've, never, I've never caught an illness, I don't think, from things being washed in a dishwasher. And um, also, I've never been ill from washing my underpants in with my regular clothes in my washing machine, as some people think you'll catch all sorts of diseases. I can't, but some people, really. Um, I think it's more younger people that seem to have these irrational fears. I think my generation, who's... I mean, my mum kept a lovely clean house, but I went out and played in the mud. I had dogs licking my faces. I was fiddling about with dirty vacuums as a child. And I'm fine as an adult. No autoimmune diseases for me. No um, asthma, no allergies. Because my body built up its natural immunity while I was growing up as a child. Right, oh, we might be able to, mm, I don't know. It's gonna be a bit tight. I was hoping to get the bowl in there, but I don't think I'll get the bowl in. I might get the jug in though. Go in. Oh. I must say this dishwasher has been good. I think it's about seven or eight years old. It was a basic machine. But yeah, whether I get another Miele is uh, up for debate. Right, I think that's uh, that'll do. There's not much more I can get in there, I don't think. That's pretty full. And yes, that's pretty full too. I confuse Mark because I've taken to putting the cutlery in different sections each time. Just so it, it gets washed from different angles. I mean, it all comes out clean, no matter where I put it. but. It's just something I've started doing. So normally, well, before I started shifting stuff about, the teaspoons used to go this way, facing inwards. And the knives possibly would go here, and the forks there. And so I've been, oh look, yeah, it's okay. There's a few odds and sods. So Mark can't fathom it. So when he, I tell him, I said, look, just put the spoon or fork or knife next to the other ones. You don't have to think about it, it's quite simple. So I, I open this and find, you know, even though all the forks are here, he might have put one over here for some reason. I've got a pastry fork here, but that's fine. But I actually, I'll put the pastry fork there. There, I feel better about that. Oof, that's a bit... Oh, look, and there's a knife. There's a, there's a random knife. Why is the random knife not next to that? Oh, you see, I'm having to readjust everything. And then, because I told him off about this, you know, it wasn't a row, it wasn't a slanging match. I just said, you know, just explained. 
quite straightforwardly, quite patronisingly, I expect. I just said, you know, put them next to the similar items. It's not rocket science, but he couldn't fathom it. So he started just leaving things out in the dishwasher, saying, oh, I can't do it. You tell me off. Uh, it's just an excuse for him not to put stuff in the dishwasher. That's all. Anyway, so we can see that we'll see all this clean afterwards. So sort of exciting. Oh, crikey, this video is full of everything. So um, I should have shown you me dirty tea towels before I started that, but never mind. That'll be for another day, something to look forward to. So here we go, that's all in there. And one thing I will say, and I've said it before, when I do eventually have to replace this dishwasher, I'm definitely getting one with the cutlery tray at the top. It is so much better than having a basket in the bottom, because like I say, as long as you're organized, when I come to empty this, all the forks are together, I just grab them all by the handles, shove them in the cutlery drawer. Marvelous. Right, I've, I've pre, pre-tableted, uh, you can't see. There you go, that's a Miele tablet. It's all absolutely filthy in there. But I'm just going to do a regular 50 wash, 50 degree. Switch on. It always, it defaults to eco all the time. I never do eco, very rarely. I tend to just use the 50 degree program and press start. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I'll use the 50 degree and press turbo. So at the moment it's going to take two hours, one minute. I think that's yes, two hours, one minute. If I press turbo, one hour 27, but I, I don't use turbo on a big dirty load. But sometimes if we've got pots and pans from Sunday dinner, I will go on to the 75, which takes two hours 42. But for every day, we just go on the regular 50. There we are and press start. Well, that electric meter is going to be whirring around at a great speed because I've got the dishwasher on, the washing machine and the oven and several lights, although the lights are all LEDs, they won't make much difference. Right, did I put in there? Yes, I've got a baking tray in there. It had reached temp, it had. It's come back on again, but I'm sure it's more or less at temp, so in that goes and let's see how long does it take I'm gonna no I'll I'll use the oven I was gonna ask Alexa but I'm not going to I don't like asking her things so what does it say 50 to 60 minutes so I think I'll do it for 55 like so it should be done in 55 I'll just pop a sharp knife into it and to see if it needs to go in for a few more minutes, but I think 55 should be fine. Of course, being a ginger cake, it's going to look more brown than, say, the Madeira cake mix that I often make. Right, we'll leave that to do its business. I'll just check my email, see what's happening with my Morrison's order, and I'll be back lickety split. Well, folks, some time has passed. The dishwasher has now got one hour five minutes left to run the washing machine has got 10 minutes left i've taken out my ginger cake i've done the knife test the knife came out clean so i'm just going to it says to leave it about 10 minutes in the doodah before putting it onto a wire rack to cool so let's get a wire rack there we are. I was going to tag this video onto a video I started last week but um, I've just been editing that while waiting for my cake to bake and I've realized it would make it too long so I've just done a quick outro of uh, the so you'll get two separate vlogs so that's exciting for you isn't it I bet you're excited I know I would be honestly it really is wonderful can you smell that just get just if, you, if you're watching with a, your device or on a telly, just get close right now, because this is a new thing, it's called smell -a vision So just get close to your screen, right? And inhale. Oh, isn't that lovely? Fresh, freshly baked ginger loaf, which I'll be enjoying later with my ginger yogurt and uh, whatever fruit, pear or... I think I've got some pears in the fridge or peaches. Pears would be nice. Pear and ginger goes well together, doesn't it? So that's washer. I think it's, uh, yes, it's doing its final doodah. 
Oh, and there's... Hello, lovely. Hello. Hello, Willow Pillow. Oh, little Winkle Pinkle. You are the pretty one. Is your little... Oh, look, she's in the bed. Lottie's in the bed, isn't she? Willow's been next to me while I've been editing, and Lottie... Are you going to climb over Lottie? Poor Lottie. Oh, just barge her out the way. Oh, hello, Lottie Potty. Hello. Mm. You're not going home yet. You're only here for the day. Just a little day visit for today. So you're not left alone. Oh, look at those lovely dogs. I've been enjoying my dogs, you know, my old vlogs. Looking at all my long departed dogs and how many we had. I think we had six or seven at one point, all at once. Oh, this oh, lovely memories. So nice to have some video footage. Hello, oi. Hello, Willow, you demanding little beastie. Oh, Hello, darling. You're sweet, aren't you? You're sweet little dogs. Well, here's my Morrison's order. It's arrived a lot sooner than I was expecting. I think my slot was between 11 and 1, and it arrived at 20 to 11. But it's a thumbs up, I don't care. It saves me waiting in all that time. Um, not that I'm going out, of course, because I'm a recluse and don't like the outside world. But anyway, I've had to start this again. I've already started this and realised I hadn't got my microphone turned on. Rookie mistake. But anyway, it should be working now. So, um, we'll quickly go through it. Right. Two. These one are two for £7 offer. I've had these before, but I've just realised these may not be vegetarian. Um, they are goat's cheese and mozzarella and red onion, but there's no vegetarian symbol on. So I don't know if the mozzarella has got rennet in or something, but I'm not wasting them. I just won't buy them again. I just didn't realise um, that they're possibly not veggie. So they're frozen um, pizzas. Yeah, I was really pleased with this order because there was only one substituted... No, not, no there was no substituted items because I, I said no subs. There was one item, Mixed Vegetable Melody, that was out of stock, so I got a refund for that. So I ordered about 30 items and one was missing. So I'm, that's quite good. Um, these potato waffles I've got because they were on a, a multi-buy frozen food offer. I don't often buy potato waffles, but they make a change from chips. You know, if I want a quick meal, if I want some veggie burgers with some a fried egg, baked beans, have a couple of two or three waffles on the side instead of chips. You know, quick, easy meal for me, folks. Cheesy garlic bread slices. Again, they're frozen and they're good to have. There's six in there, so I'd have three of those with a pasta meal. These are new. Well, I don't often... Obviously, I don't often shop at a Morrison's, but these, these I hadn't seen before. Veggie, spinach, leek, and West Country cheddar parcels. So I thought, oh, they'd be nice with uh, new potatoes and veg. A couple of Yorkshire puddings. So be nice instead of a pie or an escalop, a corn thing on a Sunday. They look different. So, yeah, I thought I'd try those. Um, some cheese and onion bakes. I almost bought some vegetable pies in the frozen section. Uh, I couldn't see the V symbol, so I had to look at the ingredients online and they had uh, chicken stock in them or something. So it's a good job I didn't buy them because I certainly wouldn't have eaten those. And I've got some breaded onion rings. So that's frozen. Pop those all back in and I'll pop those in the freezer in the garage. Right, put those down on the floor there. And I think there's more frozen. Some Linda McCartney vegetarian cheese and leek plats. Again, very nice. I'd normally have those with uh, potatoes and vegetables. Um, some vegetarian mozzarella burgers. I like those. Linda McCartney. And then... Bit of a diff, bit of a change, some potato croquettes. I can do those in my mini tea fowl oven. 
and a staple in this house McCain ready cooked jacket potato potato and that's uh, it I think that's it for me frozen so what I'm going to do folks I'm going to nip me frozen stuff out to the freezer in the garage and then I will continue with the video right that's uh, all the frozen stuff safely put away Like these were on offer. These are maybe slightly less unhealthy than biscuits. 62 calories per snack, and they're a fair size, but um, I'd, I'd have two. I think I could get away with not having three of these with a cup of coffee, but two. Oh, oh it's all right, they are sealed up. I'm sure they used to have a little tie around them when I last bought them so you could reseal them perhaps they've done away with that popped never fried uh, cheeky chocolate chip crispy rice and corn cakes so that's that oh, and then because i think these are exactly the same as the asda ones that's this is my um gravy of choice the onion gravy granules they are veggie but um i don't like the bisto as much as i used to buy the asda in this exact size packet and I've had these and they taste just like the Asda ones. So, um, gravy, some orgasmic eggs, uh, they're mixed size, they're fine and dandy. Oh, well, it's a good job, folks. Good job. I bought a couple more. Oh, is that? Oh dear. Right, that's slightly damaged. So I'll have to put that in an airtight box. So it, uh, yeah, but it'll be fine. It's got a little hole, I I'm sure it'll be fine. So I've got the Madeira that I've made. I've never had the chocolate one before. I'm not a fan of chocolate cake per se, but I thought I'd try the chocolate. The orange one was very nice that I'd also not tried until I made it with the real bits of orange in. I, I've, I'm sure I made that in a video. So a couple of cake mixes and got some dark chocolate chips I can add to the cake mix. I could put them in both. I could put extra chocolate chips in the chocolate cake or I could put them in the Madeira, couldn't I? So there's that. What's in here? Right. That was on offer. I've had that for the bathroom. Um, Domestos Power Foam. Um, I do normally use sort of uh, eco-friendly things, but there's occasions when I, I just feel like I need something with a bit more oomph. So this is foam is quite good because it does come out as a foam and it actually can be directed under the rim of your toilette. In this, you can use it like this. So it'll, you know, the foam sticks around the rim. And it's good for your tiles and your grout and just your shower tray and your sink and etc. And it was on offer at one ninety nine instead of three pounds, I think. And I did need another bathroom cleaner. Then, because at the moment I have absolutely no cordial, I have placed an order with Mr. Fitzpatrick, who make absolutely lovely cordials. I might do a separate video on that. Who knows? Um, so I've got lots of fizzy water and no cordial to go with it so i've just got a pineapple juice now it wasn't in the chilled bit oh it isn't it isn't a chilled one it's a long life one i thought it was a chilled one never mind um but that's you know i'd mix that with the fizzy water so that can go in the fridge like that and then although these i did need a couple i mean these are a lot more expensive then as 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 does new potatoes this size used to be 50 pence they went up to 60 and these were always a pound which was ridiculous i think these had gone down to 80 odd but i do need a couple more because these i just like these tinned new potatoes again it goes with a corn escalop a pie new potatoes some veg a couple of yorkshires gravy and that's a nice substantial quick meal for me folks you know right oh last one 
oh this must be it's all chilled now so I thought this looked you know I was thinking of ginger so this is nourish good for your immunity citrus protect carrot orange and ginger juice high in vitamin C it has one orange in it though <laughs> One orange, one and a quarter carrots, four apples, and a hint of ginger. I could make something much better than this, actually, with my masticating juicer. And I used to do that. Sorry, the dishwasher's emptying now, causing a, a racket in the background. That's not my stomach rumbling. Then, because I've got some rolls um, to eat up, just some ready-made egg mayo. And these, I've had these before, um, it's only a small, I think it would serve two or one greedy person. These are chilled, they're not frozen. These are Shake Shake Fries Spanish Smoked Paprika flavour. So I think you get a little sachet in them, inside the packet. You're supposed to anyway. I don't know if it's inside, it says sachet included. I think the sachets, when these first came out, used to be on the outside. The packaging has changed since I remember these from Asda. So there should be, hopefully, a little sachet inside that you sprinkle into the bag and you shake it all up and it coats it with this paprika seasoning. So, you know, I just thought I'd try those again because I haven't had them for a long time. And then, yeah, because I'm lazy and I can't, you can't be bothered to mash potato, I've got some creamy mash. Again, I could have that with veggie sausage and some veg and gravy, nice quick meal. Or sometimes I would have um, vegetarian sausage with baked beans inside a giant Yorkshire with mashed potato. You see, I am a cordon bleu. You know, I, I, I do eat only the best. <laughs> no, it's, ma it's mainly comfort food I eat and eat easy to eat food. So I've got this, looks quite fresh a bag of green leaf mixed salad. So that's to have, I might have one of those pizzas today with half a bag of this salad. I'm already quite hungry. It's only, it's only just gone 11 now. Oh, I forgot I bought two. Oh, that's right. I was wondering if they can be frozen because as I say, they are chilled. Um, I'll have to look, storage. Oh no, not suitable for home freezing. What's the date on them? 13th of the 4th. 13th of April. Oh, mm, crikey. Well, that's this Saturday, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's the 16th. Right, eat those first. Eat the sea salt and cracked black pepper ones first, and the others will be okay next week. That's fine. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I, oh, I don't remember. Oh, I thought I, I've got two salads. Oh, heck. I'm going to be eating things with salad for the next few days because these don't last long. That looks like... That's the 12th of April. What was the other salad? Mm. 14th. So it looks like I'll be having that salad with the pizza today. And finally, I believe... Yep, finally, some my favourite cottage cheese from Longley Farm, based in Home Firth, where last of the summer wine, most of the last of the summer wine was filmed. I'm sure it's still Home Firth. Yorkshire cottage cheese, natural. Yes, J.E. Dickinson, Longley Farm, Home Firth, West Yorkshire. So that is my, they used to have a, they've done away with, I suppose it's good in a way, but not good for the consumer. They used to be, a clear plastic top that went over this part so when you'd opened it when you take peel back the foil and use some of it you had a plastic topper that went on but they've done away with that so you just have to make sure you try and seal it up or use one of your own plastic lid things so that's my Morrison's delivery pretty, pretty pleased with it um, I do I, you know I haven't had much experience in Morrison's. Most of my experience in Morrison's has been via the Amazon delivery. I've been into Morrison's a few times. I prefer it to Tesco. And when I stop at my mum's, I prefer to go to the Morrison's because one thing I do miss from 
the Amazon Prime delivery with Morrison's, they don't do some of the items. So I think it's like Asda, you can you can get um, certain items from Asda delivered same day. I think they use um, Uber Eats or someone like that as to go, you know, to, to deliver them. But what I can't get, and you can only seem to get them in store, and I don't know if you can even buy them online from Morrison's when you go to Morrison's website, but it's those huge trifles they do in their sort of bakery section that, you know, like this big 600 calories. I treat myself to one of those when I'm at my mum's. So, um, yeah, so I don't think it's the full range, but at least you can get stuff delivered the same day. Um, and yeah, only one item missing, one slight damage to my Madeira cake, but all in all, yet yeah, for this delivery, it's a thumbs up. My washing's finished. So that's gonna have to go in the tumble dryer because it, I've, I think I've managed to hang out some washing maybe once or twice this year. But uh, yeah, it's hardly uh, drying weather. I mean, we've been getting some sunshine. I don't know what, Mark uses this mesh thing. It's, main, it's mainly for your lingerie, but um, it just bungs all the dirty tea towels in that. So obviously I have to wash that alongside the tea towels. Is that everything? Right, so I'll pop these upstairs in the tumble dryer and then see what else I need to do. That beeping is indicating that Mark's bread has finished. So let's have a look. He'll have made this with uh, ingredients. It's not a, a mix. It's um, He'll have done it with the bread flour and the yeast and whatever else you put into that. Yes, all right, uh, looks all right, but stop. Now, obviously this bread and the pan will be very hot. So you do need oven gloves to get the uh, bread maker pan out. And we can close the machine. And I uh, suppose you could leave it for a little while. I think he's done a, a medium loaf. Sometimes the uh, the loaves can, you know, go right to the top, but that's, I think, a medium. <clears throat> Give it a shake. Come on, ooh, there we are. Now, there's always a hole in the bottom of bread made in a bread machine because obviously there's the doodah that mixes. Some models did have a collapsible um, paddle that sort of went flat but most of most bread you left with a a hole there but yeah that, that's the step that's okay I think he's done a half and half which is half strong plain white flour and half wholemeal I think he he likes that combination because he finds I think the hundred percent wholemeal he finds that a little bit uh, heavy going so there we go so we've made a cake in this video <laughs> sort of and we've we've baked a loaf of bread well folks i think i better end this video i've just been editing it and even with some heavy editing a lot of cuts it's still over 50 minutes who's going to watch a 50 minute vlog if you've watched to the end please say gobbledygook <laughs> comment gobbledygook below if you've watched if you've been well, you, uh, you must have been tied to your chair with matchsticks holding your eyelids open like a clockwork orange, perhaps. But anyway, if you have enjoyed spending nearly an hour with me, please say gobbledygook. OK, but we'll have to finish the video now because I've got other things to do today. So um, the dishwasher is finished and I did say I'll show you the finished items. So... Let's finish the video by looking at all my lovely clean dishes. Or at least I hope they're clean, otherwise I'm certainly going to have egg on my face. As long as there's no egg on the dishes, we'll be fine. Let's have a look, still quite warm in there. Oh, looks all sparkly. Oh, stainless steel pan. <gasps> look, put your sunglasses on, missus. Wow. And I bought, 
I bought a couple of glass pans, you know, because I'm worried about things leaching into the food when frying and cooking. And these are vintage 80s ones. You can still buy them. I think they're called Visions. But the, this is made in France. Some of them are made in China, I believe now. I think this is an original Vision pan by Corning of France. It's a small fry pan. It's not non-stick, so when I fry a couple of eggs in here, I, I tend to fry them in butter. And yeah, it sticks a bit, but it's fine. And it comes clean. I've also got a tiny a little milk pan in the glass one. Again, that was a vintage 80s original that I got from eBay. Looks brand new and it's ideal for soup and stuff. I just want to get a slightly bigger pan and maybe a lid as well. But yeah, if you want to avoid anything toxic in your non-sticks, glass is the way to go. You've got to be careful with them. They're breakable. They can shatter apparently, but I mean, I think the older stuff's better. You don't use such a high heat with the glass pans. So that's all lovely and clean. A bit worried about some bowls here, but because they're quite, uh... oh look. Lovely. I use Miele detergent now in the dishwasher. I've got Miele tablets in at the moment. Look at that. Look at the shine, folks. Lovely. Oh, this thing has uh, collected some water. Got to be careful with things like that. So let's just tip that out. All this is anyway, this is just a little plinth that this dog bowl goes on. When Daisy was having trouble with her digestion, I saw this on Amazon. It helps her to reach the food better because it goes at an angle. So um, that's that. And uh, we've got the dog bowls, the stainless steel bowls. That's discolored slightly, my spatula. That always happens if you have tomato sauce or bean juice or something in the dishwasher you often get discoloration of white plastic items here's one of my uh, big doodars oh look it's, it's a little bit of residue water because it's quite um, quite soon after it's finished the only thing with this the only downside is these denby mugs they always pull water in the top it's the design of the mug in fact, most mugs, there's another mug here. There's water. So if, I'm, if I empty this dishwasher soon after it's finished, I normally just, what I do, I tend to empty the bottom first and then I take all the mugs and I put them the right way up and leave them for a bit. So any water that uh, gathered on the top dissipates. It's another lovely, glass tumbler there all clean and finally let's have a look at the cutlery so here we go here's all the, the spoons spoons there i always say spoons i can't say spoons without saying spoons You'll know what I'm referring to if you've seen that episode of Faulty Towers with Bernard Cribbins who plays a uh, spoon seller. <laughs> so look, everything. Oh look, if you haven't got a dishwasher folks, if you can afford one and you can fit one in, get one. Thank me later. And it's no more expensive to wash up a full load in a dishwasher than it is to hand wash. Because you wait for the... Um, the dishwasher to get full one thing is if you if you live on your own or a couple you might find you have to buy extra cutlery and extra utensils extra um, plates and things because if you don't have many it's never going to get full but this one with two of us it goes on every day sometimes we miss a day it depends if we've been out of course but yeah there we go everything lovely and clean ready to be put away so there you go folks that really is the end of today's overly long vlog don't forget if you've managed to the bitter end please comment gobbledygook under the video plus any other comments you care to make and i will be judging you for your spelling of gobbledygook so please 
make sure you've googled the spelling of gobbledygook before you put it under the video because you will get a smacked bottom if you spell gobbledygook wrong. That's a lovely word, isn't it? Gobbledygook. And I like shenanigans as well. Go gobbledy gobble gobbledygook and shenanigans and bollocks. I'm going to put those as my three most favourite words. So, thanks for watching this load of bollocks and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.